So um, a lot of you really wanted to see this type of stuff, so I'm going to just do some basic videos showing you kind of some of the basic process. So uh, first up, sorry about doing the whole camera on the computer screen thing. Um, in the future I'll actually do videos showing you exactly how to use SolidWorks. But I have this part designed, I was up pretty late just kind of messing around. Um, for that little tricopter design, I'm trying to design some kind of motor mounting plate. Since I've already got those 16 millimeter clamps, I designed this plate around it. Um, I also, you have to think about stuff like this. I have this stock, it's quarter by two inch, and um, I want to use this stock because I have it lying around, and um, it's going to be a decent amount of milling. Like this is this is the square I'm going to be using, a two by two. But um, what I want to do that's a little bit unique, my whole thing with power systems and motors is keeping everything as cool as possible, which is generally why I don't recommend slamming ESCs inside frames or um, out of where the prop wash can hit them. But uh, you can see this part, the clamps will actually go here and here underneath. Right, so this will be the top side. And I already made sure that my motors specifically have clearance for all of this, but it's essentially a heat sink. Right? It's just a big heat sink. I'm trying to keep as much surface area as I can without weighing the part down. And this is still a fairly small amount of aluminum, so I'm not too worried about the weight. And you can see I'm doing a lot of cutouts and stuff trying to reduce weight. But um, I don't think strength will be an issue in this part. Everything's pretty curved and rounded. And the heat sinks should be able to pull a lot of heat out of those motors, keeping the efficiency real high and keeping the equipment lasting a long time. So um, this is the part. Let me show you. I'll pull up the cam program. Now what you're actually seeing here is the the program that I created to cut this part. And unfortunately it is a step-by-step -step process telling it exact details of this is the cutter, this is the diameter of the cutter, this is the uh, height that I need it to go up to, this is the, the area I want cut and the depth I need it cut at and how many steps to cut and the radius of the cut and I mean it's it's so up up here you can actually see these are all of the the processes that I'm going to be using starting with a roughing plane to uh, use my fly cutter and surface basically deck the very top of it and and so on so I'll give you just a quick little simulation here go back this is the start right this is that two by two piece of aluminum that I am going to be cutting from and another thing to note is the the origin it's zero zero so I'm actually going to tap off this side and these sides and go to the very center of the part and then tap off against what it's mounted to the very bottom and that's my origin that's where it's basing all the cuts around but um, let's uh, let's get a quickie demo going here and uh, we'll just run through it so that was the first step going around second cutter stepping down little by little doing the profile pass Cutting out the middle, those are all 3 8 inch end mill cuts. Here's a 1 8 inch end mill going through, profiling out the fins, a little detail work, some hole punching, and then chamfer milling. Coming around, smoothing out the edges. There we go. So we should theoretically, hmm, actually, I may have a little problem there. I may need to re output the code, but I'll double check this. This should have a through hole on the 3 8 pass in the back, but um, I'll take a look at that. Either way, this is essentially what should happen, uh, assuming all goes right. I'm still learning this program. I've only been using it for probably three weeks now. So, you know, there's always little unforeseen things, and you hope those unforeseen things aren't too bad. You know, they don't cause a crash in the machine. But, um, yeah, so I'll restart the video and show what the machine does. <laughs> Crash your fingers, it does what it's supposed to do. But, um, we should get an interesting part out of it. It may be useful, it may not, it may turn into a product, it may not, you know, this is the process. So, I'll be back. So, I've got this piece in, I'm just going to do it kind of rough by hand, um, going to deck the whole top piece here, and uh, just going to make it perfectly flat, give it a nice surface finish so I can flip it and um, fixture it with double stick tape to my sacrificial plate here.
So right. I've got my origin set. I just did a little mark on this guy and eyeballed it because I know I have the tolerance around this stock to make sure I clear my cut as long as I'm pretty close. Um, and I have my Z as the bottom of the part. Z0 is bottom, the very bottom plane. Um, this is double stick, double stick taped down, which is not really ideal, but um, rather than do it in multiple steps and have to make a fixture in plate, this will work just fine for one or two uh, prototypes. So that's not, not too big of a deal. Could go flying off, not too likely with this much surface area and this quality tape, but it, it could happen. So um, what I'll do is I'll set the camera up and uh, get the cut started, and we'll see how it, how it all goes and hope it goes well. All right. We are about to start the cut. See how this works. Going up to change the tool in case I haven't. Gonna hit go, and we'll see how this works. I'll turn the coolant off a little bit here. Here she is. I definitely could expect more, um, you know, surface finish wise and and uh, time to cut, stuff like that can be optimized a lot. Um, also, I should be going over all of these fins with a chamfer mill to try to take the hard edges off. My cutter is not super sharp, the eighth inch. Um, it's about due to be retired, so it's leaving a little bit rougher edges than I like, but um, pretty good. I'll come back and show you how it, uh, how it all works. Okay, here's the part. Functional. Seems to do the job. There's the tricopter tail. So uh, definitely some unexpecteds. Um, I ever so slightly miscalculated by a lot and uh, my large motor, this one, or my 3407s, won't actually clear the fins. It would work just fine if the fins weren't there, but um, it won't actually clear the fins because of a uh, just a core core issue with how I designed it in SolidWorks. Um, stupidly, I was thinking of the stator measurement and not the outside of the can. But nice thing about this stuff is it's all digital and it's easy to. Uh, easy to change. That's why I only cut one instead of two. So, cool little project. That should do a pretty darn good job of cooling a motor. I mean, all of that contact point, you could even put some thermal paste between the motor can and the motor mount to siphon more heat down, but that in prop wash is going to be huge for keeping a motor cool. Right? Looks kind of cool. I don't know. I could work on the outside design a little bit. But, um, yeah. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Take care.